Hola, como estas? Welcome to the Whitey White Guys Show. Moyes Whitey. Um, today I'm going to review a film that came out in, I believe, 2019, 2018 called The Kid. Um, I should really pull shit up on this. It was um, directed by Vincent D'Onofrio. It stars a dude who's. I'm not going to remember his name. The guy who plays Billy the Kid. Go out and check it, look it up if you're interested. He looks a lot like Leo DiCaprio at that age. In some angles and shots. It's almost kind of creepy. And then Ethan Hawke is in this movie uh, as per Sheriff Pat Garrett. And beyond that, I have no, I didn't recognize anybody from this film um, in terms of the actors and stuff. This is a movie... Let me first off pay a few compliments. It looks fantastic. Uh, just shot a couple years ago. I like the visuals. I like the style. I was a big fan of Young Guns back in the day, which covered the same subject matter. But just a lot of the westerns and the themes back in the you know, early, mid-90s, that kind of stuff. I really like this updated look. There was a very good film called The um, Assassination of Jesse James by the by the coward Robert Ford. It's a long title. It had to do with Jesse James and his assassination by Robert Ford. And there was a much more put you in the moment visual style. You're a lot closer to the actor. There's a lot of few shots where you're like you're over somebody's shoulder, like you're the guy standing behind the guy. Or instead of just having the faces and the facades of the buildings, there's some actual depth where you're in town and you're in the alley and stuff like that. Um, a much more lived-in kind of realistic look. And I like the look. Uh, I think it, it suits the Western genre very well. So Vincent D'Onofrio, been in hundreds of movies. He was Private Pilot in um, Full Metal Jacket. The one he's probably most well known for, been in a lot of movies and TV shows. He directed this, he crushed it. Um, this is a very good looking film visually. Uh, performances are outstanding. There are a lot of characters that have like one or two senses of dialogue, and that's it. You really don't get in a tremendous amount of depth for quite a few people that I'd like to, but as a whole, uh, Ethan Hawke does a good job. Chris Pratt is in this, he does a good job. So, good performances. All the kind of technical components to a film that are objective very well done writing was fine you know i had no qualms except for the ones i'll get into in a moment but again from the technical and objective standpoints is this a well executed executed film set the story aside for a second lighting camera angles focus um performance score all those things technical execution a plus fantastic film um you know you can always pick a film there's one scene where a guy is supposed to be hitting uh ethan hawk in the face with like um uh, something like really crushing him you can tell he's air hitting him i don't want you to actually hurt ethan hawk so i can't really complain so on aside from actor safety the film was good okay the problem I have is what they did was they took the classic story of Billy the Kid versus Sheriff Pat Garrett, and they start with the events at Stinking Springs up into a little after the Billy, Billy the Kid's death in uh, Fort Sumner. Sumter. And I think it was, yeah, Fort Sumner was the Civil War. Fort Sumter was the Civil War. Fort Sumner is where Billy Kid died or vice versa. So I doubt. In any event, um, they do this weird thing, though, that I disagree with, where they created these two fictional characters, uh, about a 12, 13-year-old boy named Rio and his sister Sarah, who is you know, probably mid-20s, late-20s. And then Chris Pratt plays their uncle, who has a group of just, I guess, a gang of so many guys, um, just goons that were with him. And at the very beginning of the story, there's an abusive dad. They kill the dad. Chris Pratt's the dad's brother. Rio and Sarah are on the run from Chris Pratt and his goons. And then 10 minutes into the film or so, they're in the wood shack kind of looking thing at Stinking Springs. They fall asleep. They wake up. And there's Billy the Kid and about a half dozen of his guys sitting there. Or maybe a half dozen total would be included. And then there's, you know... There's a little bit of expositional chit chat, and then the next morning, there's Pat Garrett and his guys outside in that famous shooting where um, Charlie Beaudry got killed, 
at Stinking Springs, and then Billy Kidd and, his, and Dave Rubel and the guys, they surrendered, which this happened in real life. That's an actual event that happened and is pretty close to how it was depict, depicted in the film. In real life, it was freezing cold, and Billy the Kid and his guys surrendered because they ran out of firewood and they were going to die of hypothermia. They had no real choice. And then um, Charlie Brogy was shot once and bled out. And here he was, like, riddled with bullets. But aside from that, pretty close to what happened. You get to just what went on. And they, so they took that actual historical event where Pat, Pat Garrett actually captured Billy the Kid the first time. Um, and then they put these two characters in this fictional story into the... So here's the actual historical events of Billy the Kid and Pat Garrett. And they took these fictional characters and interwove them into the actual the actual real, real history that happened. To which I asked the question, Why? Like, you've got a great-looking film, you've got a great cast. Amazingly, it was shot in 21 days. Lightning speed shoot, so I imagine it couldn't have had a huge epic budget. But they shot it in a way where that really didn't hold them back. So maybe he had some financial limitations on the different set pieces. You know, Santa Fe, Lincoln County, Fort Sumner. You can't shoot all, you know, the, the, the word... Um, the big shootout at the end of Young Guns 1, the scale of that, the extras, you need all that. They may have had the budget. They'd have the time. Okay. Great. I, I guess. But if you're going to tell the story of Billy the Kid and Pat Garrett, which in a way you're not, like that's, it's, it's like two paralleling stories that intertwine at times. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> like, I don't care. Oh, it's the story of a up-and-coming, you know, coming-of-age 12 to 13-year-old boy named Rio, and he had to kill his father to protect his sister, and the father was abusing the sister, and I don't give a shit. That's Billy fucking Kid, and the guy they got, Hummina 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 Berg, actually looks like Billy the Kid more than any other Billy the Kid they've had, and then the clothes they got him, and the very first time you see him, he lo the clothing, he looks straight out of that, that tin type they had, which is the only known photograph of Billy the Kid. They crushed it. So here you got, got a guy who's the same age, give or take his Billy the Kid at time, looks just like him, or real close, and all, you know, um, Ethan Hawke is a pretty close semblance to Parrot Garrett from the photographs you see there. So it's like, wow, this looks good. And you feel like you're in that world. You're walking around in that world with these characters. You're watching the actual thing happen. Fuck all this other noise. I don't care about this kid and his sister and Chris Pratt. I like Chris Pratt. I understand me. Passengers is great. But I want to see the story of Billy the Kid and Sheriff Pat Garrett duking it out. Or a something. Now, so... I, I, I have just no shits that I gave about this story that wasn't Billy the Kid and Pat Garrett. And in the way it was told, I had a hard time giving a shit about that. So, uh, I just, I can't care. I just can't care. It's like, here's a piece of asparagus... Would you like this with your some amazing meal? Uh, fill in the blank. I'm actually trying to eat healthy, so I'm blanking on something that's truly delicious. All right, I'm a big macaroni and cheese. I eat like a 10-year-old kid. I'm a big macaroni and cheese and uh, mashed potatoes guy. And, you know, throw in a little bit of steak or something, a little paprika, dash of salt. It's delicious. And then but also, too... Here's this piece of asparagus that's kind of old and got weirdness growing on it. You're like, Ugh, I don't want that. But it, it comes with the, the macaroni and cheese and the thing. It's like, I don't care. I'm still not eating it. So you can take this thing I don't want and don't give a shit about and put it in this thing. I think it's great. I'm still not eating it. And that's what this is. Well... Aren't you excited about a very realistic looking retelling of Billy the Kid and Sheriff Pat Garrett and this, this historical thing that became world famous phenomena and all this stuff and you know, Young Guns was great and man, we're, we're going to update that concept. Oh, by the way, here's some asshole and his sister. 
Well, Chris Pratt's gonna, you know, rape her? Don't you want to see that too? No! And just because you mixed it in with the other stuff doesn't mean I'm going to care about it. Which is like a common theme now. Here's this stuff. Wow. It's Ghostbusters from back in the day. And they're going to bring it back. And, and there's the Ecto-1. And there's Slimer. And you got the Pax. And, and, and they're, they're, they're using the Pax. To, and the trap thing with the ghost. And don't you want to see it with four women? Who aren't funny? At least not in this. No! If you take the thing I want to see and then take your shit thing that you can't sell on its own and you put it in the thing I want, I still don't want it. Hollywood, listen to what people are telling you. And they keep trying to do this. Let's take this popular thing that people want, but let's not give them that. Let's give them this other thing that we couldn't sell, put it in with the popular thing, and tell the audience to go fuck itself. I don't know... If that's where Vincent D'Onofrio was coming from, or the studios, was it because they had a small budget, they can only shoot in 20 minutes, somebody dripped up this script of let's take this fictional story and a bunch of shit that didn't happen, and then every eighth scene there's going to be something that actually happened. It's pretty close to what went on. Fuck you, movie. Fuck you. Why? So... I would like to end up in the comment section to the three people that are going to see this. If you saw the kid in 2019, that when it came out, I don't care if you saw it last week, and you have no idea of Young Guns, Billy the Kid, the numerous films that have been made about Billy the Kid, you have no history, historical context for anything that's gone on, you just saw this as a movie, what did you think? I would like to know, because I couldn't finish it. I had to skip around a bunch to catch the crux that what went on. I just can't do it. And so I know I can understand you don't want to step on the other footsteps of the other things that have been done because they've already been done. You're not going to top Young Guns, but you can update it. It's been a long time. And you could take those scenes and those concepts and those characters and expound on them. And there's a lot of material there. There's a lot of things you could have done. Let's tell a story of Billy the Kid when his mom was still alive and that he had a brother, Joe, and his mother died of consumption and he never knew who his dad was. So, And then he got uh, his mother married um, William Antrim, some angry coal miner guy. Then his mom died. Antrim didn't want anything to do with him. So Billy ended up as a, um, an orphan on the run. And then he, he got into an altercation with Brushy Bill, or no, not Brushy Bill, Wendy Cahill. Wendy Kill, Cahill slapping around. Billy's still like 14, 15 years old. Billy ends up shooting Wendy Cahill and killing him. He ultimately dies. Billy's on the run for his life. He falls in with the Jesse Evans gang. They, they're rough and tumble. You end up in Lincoln working at a cheese factory with Charlie Beaudry and um, the other guy. I'm blanking. It was Charlie, Bo Charlie Beaudry and Doc Skurlock. Josiah G. Doc Skurlock. The factory shuts down because they get run out of town by L.G. Murphy and his guys. You end, end up falling in with John Tunstall, who takes you in. And then the Lincoln County Wars break out, or war, Lincoln County War, and the, the L.G. Murphy, um, forget what it's called, group, consortium, they end up at a, at a vertical war with the Tunstall group. And that's where Billy the Kid becomes Billy the Kid. Instead of Billy Pony, he becomes the epic, legendary Billy the Kid. And then you have the big shootout where um, a bunch of people got shot and killed in Lincoln. And then, of course, all the afterwards with Pat Garrett and stuff. You could have gone into depth about Josiah G. Josiah G. Doc Skurlock working for, not Pete Maxwell, it was the other guy from the second one. And there's a lot of information i got to recall in my brain. I'm impressed with it. There's just a lot there. You can expound on who Charlie Beaudry was. You can expound on, on Doc Skurlock. Um, you know, jo, uh, Jose... Jose Chavez E. Chavez was his name. All these guys that, that weren't introduced in Young Guns, Tom Wilson and all these guys, bring them in. Instead, they get a mention before they get killed. They mention Charlie Boger's name, and then he dies. He gets the shit shot of him. I'm going to go check on the horses. Bang, 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 and he's dead. 
get so much you could have done. You could have gone into more depth about the um, the Santa Fe ring and the corrupt politicians. Yes, Young Guns covered this material, and so did a number of films, but it was just a little dash, one scene with this character, one scene with that character. You could expound it on all these concepts, and we could have learned more about Billy Kidd. We could have learned more about Pat Garrett, who we hardly know a thing about to this day. And instead, let's spend a third of the movie or have a movie with us with these two assholes that never existed and Chris Pratt, who never, this, this whole other so story that never existed, the people that it's never happened, they don't exist. And we're just going to pop it into this thing that you give a shit about and fuck you directly in the ball. Why? And the worst head, it looked great. But there's one, one point where they hang Dave Rudabaugh. And a, he came off as a nice guy with Dave Rudabaugh one, um, but it's like the the real character hardly said a word to this guy, and then when he gets hanged, he's all sad and oh my god, and it's like hey, you met him yesterday, you hardly said a word to the man. As, but they, Dave never Dave Rudabaugh never got hanged. Why? While, while I have you here, he also never got beheaded in Mexico. He died in Wyoming, an old man. So it's just, what the fuck? And if, if you're going to take one or two scenes and depict it, like when uh, Bell and Ollinger got killed, that was pretty accurate to what happened. And they pick a few things, but that's pretty close to what went on. And and, it, and the depiction of this film of Billy Kids Escape from Prison and Lincoln, he killed uh, Bell and Ollinger, <clears throat> it's the way Billy the Kid described it. Not the way it's been portrayed in films. In Young Guns 2, <coughs> the non-existent prostitute put a bullet in the in the outhouse, a bullet, a gun in the outhouse. Billy the Kid requests to go to the outhouse. He gets the hidden gun, and he uses that to kill J.W. Bell. Never happened. Billy the Kid, as they were going up the stairs after going to the outhouse, spun around really quick with Bell coming up the stairs behind him and hit him with the shackles, the heaviest hell metal shackles they had him in, really hard. J.W. Bell stumbles down the stairs. Billy the Kid, as he hits him, grabs a pistol from his holster. Bell's got a shotgun. Bell starts to come up with a shotgun or rifle, I forget what it was. And Billy, you know, both people in a panic end up shooting at each other and Billy, killed, Bill, Billy the Kid killed John W. Bell. He didn't want to. He liked the guy. But Bell got hit in the head, he's faced, he's panicked, he pulls his rifle up. Billy has to shoot him to survive. Bob Ollinger comes around the corner, Billy goes upstairs, gets a shotgun, and from the window blows Bob Ollinger away. That's really close to what happened, and a lot closer than how it's been depicted in films. Sorry, I didn't know I was that thirsty. Yeah. Uh, so the point is, A plus on that scene, make that the whole movie. So where Hollywood, Young Guns and Young Guns 2, do what everything's, every movie's got to do with real, we do in real history, and compress it. And so when you've never heard of Lincoln County, you heard of Billy Kidd, but you don't know how this all came to pass. If you watch Young Guns, there's a lot of scenes where the, like the shootout at the bar initially with Billy Kid kills um, Henry Hill. That never happened. But it's a scene to illustrate the overall of what was happening. A bunch of guys with no training were handed badges to um, arrest the Murphy men who killed John Tunstall. And things got carried away. A bunch of people with young men with no formal training were handed guns and badges. And things got carried away. And there's a number of scenes that illustrate the essence of what was going on. Um, and so it's very time compressed. There was 30 or 40 guys working for John Tunstall. They got uh, they got compressed in composite characters. There were only seven or eight guys, I think, ultimately throughout the film. There were a lot more guys. So let's start at the beginning and actually expound on these ideas and give you more depth as to who these people were. John Tunstall is depicted in Young Guns 1 is an old gray-haired Englishman. In real life, he died at 26 years old. He was barely older than Billy. 
And L.G. Murphy, who's depicted as an old man, was dying of cancer in bed through the events of Lincoln County War. Hardly had a thing to do with it. That was the other guy, um, Dolan. I forget his first name, John, John, John Dolan or something. His second-hand man. He was the guy in that situation. So, and he was, like, say, 30, early 30s. So you had a guy in his early 30s and an Englishman is 20. average guy was in his early 30s and an Englishman is 26. Young guns could have been a lot younger. Those are the two guys running things. Those are the two guys going head to head, not L.G. Murphy and some non-existent old British guy. And Billy was right in the mix of that. So you could have got that more accurate, more down to earth instead of the rock and roll MTV music video that was Young Guns. I love Young Guns. Young Gun Two is fair. Love Young Guns, but it was a very quick to the point. Let's give you the essence of what happened. This is a movie about the events, not a documentary. You could have made this a little more documentary. And a more, a little more realistic. We're going to expound on who these characters are and the events that took place, give you more information about it, and still have it be its own film. Instead, we just pulled our ass cheeks open and shit in your cereal. And it's like, I don't. Uh, why? Just why? And then at one point, Billy the Kid's like, I had to kill my father to protect my mother because my father was abusive. He never knew who his father was, and neither do we. Or if he did, he died when he was very young. Okay, his mom took him from probably uh, five points in New York all the way like down into Illinois and Missouri and then into um, New Mexico when he was elementary school age. And his dad was never in the picture. We can only guess, my guess, and his dad, his dad's name was was Henry McCarty, an Irishman, because Billy took that as an alias. And that was his theme. He went by uh, Billy Bonnie, for the most part, because that was his mother's many name, was Bonnie. Then he was adopted by William Antrim, so he took William Antrim as an uh, alias. And the other name he was known for taking was Henry, Henry McCarty. I'm going to go on a limb with the theme we got established here that Henry McCarty might have been the name of his dad, but we don't know. And we don't know. Did his dad die or just take off? Nobody knows. What happened to his brother, Joe? Couldn't tell you. Okay. Interesting things to know. Somebody's like, I had to kill my father when I was 14. It was abusing my mother. I had to be done. And then you attach that to this fictional story that never took place. Why? When, if Billy's father ever died of something, it was when he was elementary school age. Or even younger. By the time he was a teenager, he had been adopted by William Antrim. And he didn't shoot and kill William Antrim. If, if anybody, that would have been, uh, or he was just blind to the kid. But it would have been uh, Wendy Cahill at about that age. But he would have been older. 1516 when he killed Wendy Cahill, the first guy he ever killed. So it's just like, why? You've got so much. You, you, you could have a scene that depicts Billy the Kid killing Wendy Cahill and then falling in with the Jesse Evans gang. And then the Jesse Evans gang ride in, rides into Lincoln. And that's when Young Guns, two, the Young Guns starts off, when Billy the Kid's in Lincoln. So you could start before that, make it effectively a prequel, and we'll start with Billy the Kid at, at, at you know eight nine years old. His mom you know goes from New York down into Illinois, down into Missouri, down into New Mexico, you know, and marries William Antrim. We'll cover some of that in the first act, and then when uh, his mom dies, that kicks off the second act, and then he ends up you know on the streets. He ends up gambling to make money. Runs, comes across Wendy Cahill, kills Wendy Cahill because Wendy K Cahill slapping him around. And then he ends up with the Jesse Evans gang. And then the film ends with him riding into Lincoln where the events of the first uh, Young Guns would take place. Not a bad idea. Instead, ass cheeks open, shit into your, cer into your Cheerios. God damn it. God fucking damn it. I could see... I could get a movie... Where Billy the Kid is working at a fucking cheese factory with Charlie Bowdry and Josiah Z. Josiah G. Doc Skurlock. And then you've got, uh, who did Charlie Cheen, Cheen play? What was that guy's name? Um, 
I'm blanking on his name. He's going to come to me on my, while well, I'm standing at work three hours from now. He could have, that guy who was a farmer lost his farm to LG Murphy. And all these people that were losing their farms to LG Murphy Company and ended up working for John Tunstall, where you're already there when Young Guns 1 takes off. So you could expound on that whole, the few years in events and politics prior to the beginning of Young Guns and effectively make that a trilogy. Make it a prequel, and then you got Young Guns 1 and 2. And if it's done well, and it expounds on the history of what really happened, I fucking love you for it. Instead, ass cheeks open, shit in my Cheerios. Thank you for nothing. <sighs> but it looked good. Good acting. I'm going to fuck. I gotta go. I gotta work. I gotta go to work. Merry goddamn Christmas spill happened. Fuck.